in this lesson, we'll write and execute our first Ruby file. So pretty exciting stuff. So here in VS Code, I've opened up the hello world.rb file, and you'll find the same file within the first directory within the first course section folder in the course materials. And right now the file is empty. So what I want to do in this lesson is just write one line and that line is going to output some text to the screen. So by default, when we run a program with Ruby, Ruby is going to read it and parse it much like we might read a book, but by default, it's not going to actually output anything. It's just going to read the file silently. So we have to explicitly tell Ruby when we would like to output something to see and what that something should be. So in order to do that, we're going to use something called a method in Ruby. And for now, we can think of a method as a command. It's an instruction that we ask Ruby to execute for us. The method I want to introduce you to first is called puts. So let's write that name out right here in all lowercase P-U-T-S puts. So the puts method is going to output content to the screen. Again, a method is just a behavior or a command. It's a specific instruction that is built into the language. And in this case, the puts method is a command for us to see something output when the program runs. The way that I like to remember this method is think about the word outputs, right? When you output something, you produce something, right? So here, puts is a very similar idea. It's going to output something to the screen when the program runs. A couple important things worth noting here. As you proceed throughout the course, it's very important that you get into the mind of a programmer, which means being very detail oriented. A lot of times we human beings can get away with uh, silly mistakes and other people will fully understand what our intent is. So for example, in a sentence, for example, if you provide the wrong capitalization for the first letter of a word, somebody reading your sentence will still be able to understand the thought that you're trying to express. In programming, the computer is much stricter. So for example, when I wrote out puts right here, it's very important that it be written in lowercase because it's not gonna work any other way. If for example, you capitalize the P or the S or all of the other letters. So as you proceed throughout the course, keep in mind that case sensitivity is very important. You have to write out the characters in the exact same way that I am. And you also have to be very careful about the little things like each space that you add or the presence or absence of something like a comma. Each one of those things may seem really trivial because we're just not used to paying that much attention to it, but in programming, it's very important. And literally one character can be the difference between your program running correctly or completely falling apart, okay? So puts is going to be written in all lowercase. Then we're going to put a space and then we have to tell Ruby what to actually output to the screen. And we're gonna output a piece of text. In fact, we're going to actually follow a tradition or a rite of passage in programming, and that is outputting the text, hello world. This is a tradition that goes back decades. Uh, it's kind of one of those things that developers pass on down to the next generation of developers. Whenever I first learned to code, the very first tutorial that I followed told me to output the exact same text. So it's kind of fun to pass this tradition on to you. So we want to output the text, hello world. In order to create a piece of text in Ruby, we're going to need to place a pair of double quotes. And you'll notice as soon as I write my first double quote, VS Code will automatically provide my second one. All right, and this is an example of how a professional text editor helps us to write code. If we were writing in something like Microsoft Word, every character would be literal. In, in that case, we would only have just one quote. Here, you can see that VS Code automatically uh, auto-completed, if you will, that uh, second double quote for me. So the way that it works is the first double quote represents the beginning of a piece of text and the second double quote represents the end. So within these double quotes, we actually write the text that we want to output to the screen. 
So here's a good opportunity to introduce your first bit of programming terminology. In programming, the technical word that we use for a piece of text is a string. So a string is just a collection of zero or more text characters. So that can be things like alphabetic characters, numbers, digits, or symbols like the exclamation point or the dollar sign. Any text is valid. Basically, any character on your keyboard is valid, but it has to be written within these double quotes. That's how Ruby knows the beginning and end of the content. So here, we're going to output the text, hello world. And once again, case sensitivity matters. So when we see the result of this file, notice that we're going to have a capital H and a capital W. So that's exactly what we're going to see output onto the screen. Okay, so how can we actually run this file using Code Runner? The first way that I want to introduce you to is by using the keyboard shortcuts that you have available. Before we even do that, let's just make sure that we also save the file. You'll notice that uh, in the file tab right here with the file name, we have that uh, white circle. That's basically an indicator that we have made changes to the file, but not yet saved it. So you can go ahead and save the file on a Mac that's going to be Command plus S, and on a Windows computer that's going to be Control plus S. That is the keyboard shortcut. So now you'll notice that uh, circle goes away. And it's important to save the file because that's when it's actually saved onto your hard drive so that when Ruby reads it, it, it has the most up-to-date version of the code. So here are the keyboard shortcuts. On a Mac OS to run this file, we're going to press Control plus Option plus N. On a Windows computer, you're going to press Control plus Alt plus N. So N like Ninja, all right? So once again, uh, Control plus Option plus N on a Mac, Control plus Alt plus N on a Windows computer. And when you press that, you should see this panel appear, hopefully on the right-hand side. And here is where we're actually going to see the output of the file. So what this means is Code Runner has successfully read our Ruby file and ran it, and that is uh, the result on the right that we get from it. So we have accomplished exactly what we wanted. We wanted to output a text called Hello World, and that is exactly what we see on the right-hand side. So everything is set up successfully. We have output text to the screen, all right? I also want to show you a couple different ways that you can run this file again within VS Code. The first is you'll notice there's a play button right here on this kind of main tab or panel that extends across your editor. If you press that, the file will rerun. And once again, we're going to get the same output. And then also, if you hold your mouse inside the actual file and right click, you'll see this options menu. And the very first option will be run code. You'll also see your system's keyboard shortcut on the right for that command in case you forget it. So here on a Mac, you can see it's Control Option N. If I press that, once again, the file will uh, re rerun and the output will be cleared and we're going to see the new output right here. All right, so that is it. That is the basics of writing a file, saving a file and running it with Code Runner. This is basically going to be what we do throughout the course. We're going to introduce some bit of code. We're gonna talk about it and talk about what it does. And then we're going to run it and see the output that it produces on the right. All right. So this is how we run things with Code Runner, and this will work for 95% of the examples throughout the course. But we're also going to need to be able to run Ruby from our terminal on occasion, and I'll show you how to do that in the very next lesson.